little good morning again. Um, this, as you can have seen from the service, a, is Christian beginning of Christian Aid Week, and Christian Aid have realised that they are now a, having to do things very differently. It's sort of virtual Christian Aid Week. It's online Christian Aid Week, um, but they continue to try and do their work, and we'll come to that a, shortly. But as ever, we're, we're, we're all still in this lockdown due to the impact of the coronavirus on all of our, our lives. And there are three things about this that we are in need of. Uh, first of all, we need a way. The way we try to stem uh, the flow of this virus through society was to go into this lockdown and now we're trying to find the way out of the lockdown so that we can do the least harm to what has been achieved but yet also bring back a, our community, our economy, our society. The way, um, not everybody embraces the way however all those people that have been fined and uh, arrested because of breaking the lockdown, even the man who came up with the way that would sort of help us with uh, saving people's lives uh, breaks the lockdown. Um, the second thing that we need is truth. We are asking that our readers come to us with a degree of openness and transparency. We expect them to stand at podiums and to talk to us truthfully, to tell it as it is, to enable us to make our choices based on uh, what we are told. And again, we discover that that's not always the case. Um, Matt Hancock talked about making his target by the end of April of 100,000 tests only for immediately the media to discover that there were discrepancies in how he told that story. And so through that and through other things, we do always have this degree of uncertainty. Are we being told the truth? And then finally, life. All of this is about trying to save lives, to enable us to live um, even in the shadow of a deadly virus. And so everything that's happening is about trying to enable life to be sustained. And yet to do so, we've curtailed life. We've brought stress and anxieties upon life. And every day we hear about the loss of life, the number of deaths rising still. We need in all things, but especially when life is really affected by it, we need the way, the truth, the life. The ancient Israelites, they knew the source of these things. They knew the way. They called it Halakha. Halakha was the bringing together of everything that they had received through revelation, the Torah, the rest of scripture, all the commentaries that were made by the scribes about the scripture, all of the wisdom and the teachings of the sages, everything, when you combined it into one unit, it was the halakha, it was the way. Truth for the ancient Israelites wasn't a thing about knowledge as such, it was about action. The psalmist said, teach me your way that I may walk in the path of truth. Truth was about doing things and you could only do the right things if what you were doing was reliable and trustworthy, if it was something that led to goodness happening in your life and in the lives of others. 
truth was about that which is genuine and real. And so uh, the activity of human life was built upon truth. And finally, they also knew about life. For life was everything, was living. And so the source of that life came from God. And life was what happens when you are allowed to be. Everything is able to praise God because it is what it is. The psalmist could speak about the hills praising God and the trees praising God and the grass praising God because they were being what they were to be. And people praised God when they were able to be. But it was very difficult for human beings to be. To be without all that might hinder life, shorten life, things that we in ourselves did to corrupt life and to mess up life. And so they knew about the way, the truth, and the life. And they knew the source of these things were God. So imagine the astonishment on the faces of the disciples who were sitting around a table with their master and friend, unaware that this would be their last meal together when Jesus then says to them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The carpenter from Nazareth, the man of flesh and blood, was basically saying that he was God. For God is the source, the content of the way, the truth and the life. And he didn't say, I am our way, our truth, our life. For given that he was about to go to his death, a death that was so painful and shameful, so lonely, so separating from everything and everyone, including God, there is no way that that price would be worth paying if it was just simply an option amongst many other options. No, Jesus declared, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so that means that the gospel, the good news, was that anyone who believed and came to Jesus, allowed Jesus into their lives, were receiving into their being the way, the truth, and the life. That is what we receive when we are baptised in his name, when we live in Christ. To live in Christ is to be called Christian. That's what the word Christian means. It means belonging to Christ. And so in this week, when we are asked to remember the work of Christian aid, I think it's important to focus on that first word in relation to the second word. Christian aid has been on the go for a long time, since the end of the Second World War, which is another thing that we've been remembering this past week. It was started, remember, to look after the great flow of refugees across Europe to give them material aid. But what prompted the material aid giving? It was that Christians who are in possession of the way the truth and the life knew what to do in order to give these people what they needed most in life. And that's been how Christian aid has operated down through the years. They have changed. They have uh, adapted. They have moved into new areas of work. Why? 
because of the Christian part, because of their union with Christ, because all their work is done through the outflow of his life in them. They are always aware of the way and the truth and the life that is needed in any particular situation. This is the great thing that we offer to the world. There is an old hymn into the new hymn. But here is its first verse. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust my sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. As we in our society today are looking for the way, the truth and the life, there are going to be those who will offer them. Here is a way. Here is some truth. Here is a measure of life. But it's going to be built on sinking sand. What people in the society today have now realised, many of them, the sinking sand of what we thought was the solid rock of their existence. But no, their lives have been turned upside down. Their trust in their abilities and the businesses and uh, the commerce that we um, relied on, all of that evaporating almost before our eyes, shifting, sinking sand. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so, again, as I've said in these sermons in this time of lockdown, this is preparation time, people. We are in possession of the way, the truth, the life. We stand close to Christ at this time in prayer, in the, in the looking again at, at Scripture, looking at the, old, the New Testament, the Gospels, the Epistles, but also the background of the Old Testament, and drawing through the Spirit of God what needs to be done so that people's lives can be built again on more solid foundation. We will be offering to our local communities Christian aid in the exact same way as the organisation Christian Aid offers it to the many communities around the world that require it. And part of what we will do will be to continue to support them. May I conclude this sermon by thanking the people in my own congregation, especially Audrey Downey, who has coordinated Christian Aid for us over the entire time I've been minister here and again has adapted, has shown that there is a way, there is a truth, there is a life, even in these circumstances whereby we can support this organisation. This is my anniversary service. The first service I ever took at Polworth was Christian Aid Week. I have always tried to promote it uh, in support of those in my congregation who work tirelessly to offer support and help to Christian Aid. So I hope that today we will take heart from the fact that we are those who, by being Christian, are in possession of this great gift. We have within us the way, the truth and the life. And I hope that that will encourage us to believe that whatever happens in the future and however long it takes, we will be able to offer to our society the hope, the faith and the love that comes from knowing the one who is the way, the truth and the life. I will see you all in a fortnight's time.